Hey guys, and welcome back to the show. This is That Was History, and I'm your host, Cliff Langston. One thing I've learned while studying history over the years is that it is definitely educational, but it can also be very entertaining. In previous episodes, we have discussed some very crazy topics, such as people thinking tomatoes were deadly, the fad of St. John's Dance, and others. We look back at these events and activities from history and laugh, but I have a feeling we currently have a few of our own strange behaviors that will be seen as idiotic in the future. For now, let's take a look at five pastimes and practice from history that I'm sure will shock and amaze. First up on our list is a guaranteed way to grant yourself good luck, according to people from the 17th and 18th century, of course. All you have to do is find yourself a gullible cat roaming around and gather it up and toss it in a sack. Once the bag is tied up, simply set the bag on fire. As the unfortunate animal meets its demise, you will supposedly come into great fortune. If for some reason your cat supply is running low, it is said that a fox will do just as good. Our subconscious desire to hurt animals does not end here though, I'm afraid. If you had walked the halls of Harvard University around 1930, you might have bumped into Lothrop Withington Jr., a student from that time period. At a bet of $10, Mr. Withington successfully ate a living goldfish. As it always does, news traveled quickly and before you knew it, rival schools were competing to see who could eat the most living goldfish. If for some reason you find yourself up to the challenge, the current record is 300 goldfish. <laughs> Number three for today deals with the best way to get rid of disease that is plaguing the body. We've all been sick at one point or another, and it's never fun. For centuries, it was believed that all bad ills expel themselves from the body by exiting through the human hair. Due to this belief, the best remedy was to create what is known as a Polish plate. All you have to do is not wash, comb, or mess with your hair at all. The hair will eventually knot up and fill with lice, trash, and anything else you can imagine. If the head was dirty, then it was believed that the body was cleansing itself. Oh, how wrong we were. Moving right along, our fourth interesting practice from history deals with the element radium. There was a growing infatuation with the element in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, during which time people found uses for it in almost all kinds of appliances. One such machine was an x-ray scanner used by people who were buying new shoes at the store. The machine used a low dose of radiation to help match the customer with the right shoe for their feet. A good idea, but there are always consequences when dealing with radiation. Store employees who were constantly around the machines found themselves more susceptible to illnesses and injury. Thankfully, the radium-powered x-ray machines were retired by the 1960s in the United States. Last on our list is a painting technique that is a little on the morbid side. In the 18th century, there was a popular color known as mummy brown that was used in quite a few paintings, including this one from 1815. It was common for many European painters to turn the remains of mummified Egyptians into paint in order to grasp that oh-so-significant shade of brown that couldn't be produced by any other means. Why in the world would we use human remains for paint? Personally, I have no idea, but what's worse is that this version of paint was used all the way up till the 1960s when someone finally said, maybe we shouldn't be doing this anymore. <laughs> well, there's your five strange pastimes and practices from history. I hope that you found them as interesting as I did, and I look forward to hearing your thoughts about them in the comments section. If you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, use the link in the description to visit our friends over at Cracked.com. They have 24 additional insane pastimes that weren't mentioned here. Also, if you could do us a huge favor and share this video across Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, and anywhere else across the internet, we'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.